When he dies and where he is buried, a cedar tree will grow and be useful to people. The roots for baskets, the bark for clothing, and the wood for shelter. So this is a, just a brief introduction to sort of how the indigenous people view the cedar tree. It is one of the most giving trees through its ability to provide all of its resources. Um, I'm gonna pass around some, some fronds to either both of you and some bark. If you wanna get a look, this is some outer bark. So I'll pass it opposite ways. And then there's also just, I found just this one piece of inner bark on the ground that you can pass. And take a minute to just sort of look at the textures and the colors that you see sort of the, the different materials. Um, and I have, I made a zine for this project. And I actually intentionally didn't fold them all the way because I want everybody to have a chance to take the time to make something by hand a little bit and look at how things are weaved and braided and how you can create one material into something else through a little bit of ingenuity. Um, so if y'all want to take one and pass it around, I'm gonna give a brief little, show everybody how to make a zine. Um, Cause I think it's a pretty cool resource that I've learned and have used in the past. It's sort of my own connection to creating something with a raw material. And it's also really important to acknowledge that this class is largely analog, we're using paper. And to sort of think about how much material and how much resource we're using and think about how to really honor it. And one of the biggest things that I have gathered in my research and my own experience with cedar is gratitude and having an offering and really appreciating the life and the spirit that is in each tree and each being around us. I believe that about all organisms, not just cedar tree, but this is really a wonderful example. And it's already been folded in half once. And then fold it in half again, hamburger. And unfold it. And fold it hot dog style. So that each sort of, you might be able to see where like the pages are sort of delineated. And then in your original fold, the, the mega hot, the mega hamburger, gently you can just tear it down to the first crease with the folded side being the side that you tear. So the open ends are at the bottom. Cedar is known as Thuya Placata, it's the Latin name. It is part of the Arborvitae family. I think Arborvitae is a family. I'm slightly unclear, no? I don't know. Um, and Arborvitae is Latin for tree of life, which was named after the native term for cedar, tree of life. Um, placata means folded in plates. So if you saw your fronds, if you look very closely, you might see some on the ground around you. It almost looks like a braid, mm -hmm. which is really quite cool. Um, and it's not actually a true cedar, it's a cypress, which I didn't know until I started researching for this project. Um, and as you can see, there's a sturdy bark, and some people call it the string cheese tree because of the way the bark peels off in all these long strips. Um, she has a light green canopy with these drooping J-shaped fronds. And in the fall or different times of year, the ones towards the bottom will turn sort of an auburn color and fall off. You may find them on the ground around you. There's a, they turn bright green in summer. And she likes to have her feet wet. So you'll find her in areas that are swampy, moist, often lowland forests. There's um, a list of her neighbors in here, plants that often grow in conjunction with Western Red Cedar. She's allelopathic, which means that her, um, there's an allele in her root system that changes the plants that are able to grow in the soil surrounding her, which is really interesting. I haven't, I wasn't able to find a ton of 
information specifically about that in my research, um, but it is a really interesting thing to know. Um, and she has all these antimicrobial properties in her wood that make her an incredible resource. That means the wood can last for a really long time. It's also really soft and pliable, and so it can be used for all kinds of things. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the traditional uses or indigenous uses. This is not a traditional use of cedar, but it's a, a more modern take on creating something with that. And it's really beautiful. It's really hardy, sturdy, and yet gentle. Um, so she, Thuya Placata, um, spring cheese tree, long life giver, the rich woman maker are some of the names that she's had over the years. Um, so there's ways that the wood can be harvested without hurting her and she can be alive and there's actually, I learned that there's quite a few ways to harvest planks or boards from her wood without killing her, which is a really incredible thing. I don't know if any other tree is able to withstand that. Um, it's really cool and there's uh, just some incredible techniques. And one of the things that I really want to emphasize both sort of touching on a conversation that we were just having earlier about consent and sort of and just sort of framing our way of being out here in this space is that these trees are beings as well. And I personally, I see that they have as much autonomy and individuality as we do. And they have the right to be treated with respect. And I think that they deserve being asked consent just as we would ask consent of one another. And so before we go and pick plants or harvest wood or dig things up to ask and whether, you know, you might not get an, a verbal yes with enthusiasm, but there's other signs that you can look for. And just when you're out, maybe, I don't know if any of you forage or harvest, but really taking the time to maybe give an offering a, gr a giving of gratitude, a thanks, before you even get what it is that you might want. But just taking a moment to ask before you take. And I think that's something that's been lost a lot in our culture. And I've been practicing bringing back into my own life. And so I personally don't feel comfortable doing that without knowing how to do it respectfully and responsibly. And that's something that has been a really interesting process in, in this project and in sort of my own practice with, with other beings, non-human beings, um, but she is one of the most giving trees that there is, especially in this region. Her wood has been used for structures, for canoes, for bent wood boxes and totem poles. She can be used to build and create all kinds of things, especially because of her antimicrobial properties. The wood is incredibly long-lasting. She can grow to be absolutely enormous. Even with the inside might start to rot, but she will continue to grow and withstand despite any exterior conditions. And she can persevere through a lot of shade, which makes her particularly resilient. Indigenous uses of cedar, both today and historically. Some of the things that I found personally really fascinating were the uses of her bark. And I remember the first time I ever Got, like learned about western red cedar at an arboretum and learning that the bark was used to make diapers for babies and just being absolutely flabbergasted that like a wood product could be so soft and so supple that it could be used as clothing and it was when I was doing my research I realized that clothing would be made and woven using the bark the inner bark so there's a small piece that right there um, and then maybe inner is even softer and it's pounded and softened and then woven and sort of like if you can imagine we like this was our little like paper not quite weaving but like paper tactile activity just like the amount of time and consideration it takes to weave something um and these items that, so she was woven into baskets blankets clothing and one of the most powerful things about this is that because of these antimicrobial properties they would last for generations and there's something really interesting as I've been preparing for this trip and like I have my raincoat that was my mom's from like the 80s and it's like just this trashed thing that like doesn't hold water and that we go through our things so quickly and thinking about how much care 
we can give something that was once living and how to maintain something and treat it with respect and how much it can continue through generations and how much value something has when it's been able to be passed on. And Nick might show us sort of a similar technique to the way that cedar has been woven into rope with stained nettle, which is really cool. Um, her bar can also be used for towels, wound dressings, it's really absorbent. The roots can be made into baskets and cordage, which is similar to rope. The, the bows can be cordage. They um, also have a number of medicinal properties. However, it's a very powerful medicine, so it's not something that I would necessarily encourage experimenting with at all. And I certainly don't feel comfortable telling you about it or how to use it or how to do it, especially because it's not something I've been trained in. And it's such a potent medicine that it has the potential to harm. Um, and as is true with a lot of medicinal plants, the medicine is also the poison, sort of depending on the dose, and so it's really important to build a relationship with a being and listen and learn what the boundaries are. You think about a canoe and then being able to travel, and then, well, if you have a canoe, you also need a way to bail water, and you would need a basket, and you would need something warm to wear, and just all of these things are provided by the cedar, which is, in absolutely incredible and she's said to be so powerful that if you take the time and lean your back up against her if she gives you permission that you can gain her strength through you and that's something that I want to share considering I think a lot of us will need a lot of strength through this journey that we're on in spring block through the rest of our lives considering how much power and energy we can gain from the beings around us that are maybe we haven't considered as being able to share with us and being able to tap into the power and get the strength through connecting to the beings around us that have been here for so much longer than we've been alive on this earth as human species. There's so much wisdom in learning to live and thrive in this climate that we as humans haven't cognitively learned yet, but that these other organisms know in ways that we don't. That's one of the most beautiful gifts of cedar for us here right now that I really want to share with you is that there's so much wisdom around us and there's so much strength. And so I would like to give you all a few minutes to find the cedar and maybe sit at her roots and take a few moments to get to know her a little bit and maybe look at her leaves or her bark and consider what she reminds you of. Maybe you want to take a few notes on how her fronds look or what type of texture she is. And there's all these different ways that you can really build a relationship and build these connections. with the butterfly stomata. String cheese tree, tree of life, long life giver. I also thought it was really interesting that the seeds are so small that most rodents don't even bother eating them. And I wonder how that impacts the ecology of her and the succession. So I think it's... So they inhibit, like the roots inhibit certain organisms from living around them? Yeah. Okay. I believe that's true. And that's an anti-microbial? class and went up on a forest canopy and like a big crane in this area and was able to look out over the forest canopy from above and he said that um, he was up there and they were there was this really big infestation of um, some kind of fungus I don't remember specifically what it was that was coming through the forest and had been killing all these different trees and then actually this was something else and um, then when it got to the cedar it's like there was a, a large section of cedar trees the fungus just stopped and just and everything from that side on was healthy granted that could be like due to the timing of things but just he to has told me many times that, that was like such a profound moment to see how resistant it was and resilient which reminds me that tr cedar trees are also I totally meant to put this in the scene are community trees which mean that they often grow near each other and will grow in circles or with other cedars which is really interesting in thinking about their significance in our cultural community also in other communities that are non-human.